Hey guys, uh, this is the S2000 bias guide. So without wasting too much time, let's get into it. The F20C is a high oil consumption engine. So there's these tend to uh, get damaged as their bearing shells break apart from lack of lubrication. So listen in for any untoward noises. On your test drive, check for any hesitation when floored. If so, then it's usually a failed MAP sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor, on top of the inlet manifold. But it could be a dodgy lambda sensor too. The map sensor can sometimes be cleaned up, but the two lambda sensors must be replaced if they fail. When the engine is hot, listen for timing chain tensioner rattle. It can fail at around 75,000 miles ish. Other problems can include failed oxygen sensors, intake air temperature sensors, and injectors, but all are easily sorted out and are simple DIY fixes though. If there is a misfire, it may be due to blocked or dirty injectors. A fuel additive may get that fixed. If not, new injectors may be needed. It could also be due to one or more faulty coil packs, each per cylinder. F20C don't usually overheat, but if it is, expect major engine work, since it's all alloy. On cars up to O3, there shouldn't be any more than three bars showing on the temperature readout. Later S2000s uh, featured different instrumentation and on these it's okay for up to 7 bars yeah, close to 7 bars yeah, box, uh, you're unlikely to encounter significant problems aside from a worn out clutch since 70,000 miles uh, one of clutch once 70,000 miles have been surpassed prop shaft and diff are both strong but inner joints of drive shafts can wear prematurely Suspension and brakes The brake calipers tend to rust and lock up leading to sideways action on braking So look out for that More likely to be a problem is imprecise handling because of split caster pushes or misaligned suspension Repairs are complicated by the fact that the offset bolts to the meta elastic lower wishbones wishbone pushes tend to seize and the whole replacement of the wishbones is the only solution. Poor anti-rust protection can cause suspension, nuts, bolts and eccentric adjusters to seize. Also check the radius arms incorporated into the rear suspension design are also fitted with offset bolts through their bushes and these also seize, at least tend to seize. Putting everything right with the aftermarket parts can be costly. So check the service history for evidence of the suspension having been adjusted and greased. Bodywork. Check for any signs of accidents since these cars are tail happy. So look out for any panel gaps, pain mismatch, or sprain. Check the inner wings for signs of rippling or welding. Do the same with boot floor. Any poor crash repairs will be obvious in these areas. Look for rust in the inner rear wheel arches and the leading edge of the sills. Corrosion can be an issue since the anti-rust protection was so poor. The electric roof is usually reliable although many don't sit flush with the bodywork when lowered as the elasticated tensioning straps tend to weaken with age. Replacement Honda S2000 roofs are available, which uh, will make the hood fold neatly again. The striker plates can be worn too, which are easily replaced with later parts which are thought to be made from harder metal. If you can get the entire service records and find that 
everything has been well taken care of then go ahead man that's your car hope you guys found this short video helpful if you liked it smash that like button if you loved it hit that subscribe button